Hi, I'm Charlie. I'm the writer and director of this project, Ceaseless. June 1916, a conflict begins at Mount Sorrel, just east of Ypres. The 20th Light Division fights alongside the Canadians to hold their lines against the Germans. This is where our story takes place, which leads us straight into the premise. A soldier struggles with his humanity amidst one of the most brutal wars of the 20th century. Our protagonist, a young man named Joseph Densmore, is part of the 20th alongside his friend, Bill Bray. They receive information from their colonel that a German scouting party is gaining intelligence on British lines. They are to intercept the scouting party and stop the Germans receiving any of the intelligence, or the Germans will launch a huge trench raid with a massive tactical advantage. In this first act, we begin to learn that Joseph and Bill know each other, and that Bill is grieving the loss of their mutual friend, George. After receiving their orders, Bill suddenly hatches a plan to capture a German soldier and reap the rewards, which were a few days off in the reserve trenches. A tired Joseph is tempted, but doesn't completely agree to this plan. Moving into the second act, we begin to learn more about Joseph and Bill's history with George. We can only guess at why Bill is so saddened by his death. In a sudden turn of events, they are ambushed by the scouting party and a shootout ensues. Bill fights brutally and without mercy. We see Joseph's hesitance to kill, even when fighting in self-defense. They end up capturing a German soldier who is injured in the shooting. They restrain him and then camp and wait for nightfall. Joseph is clearly uncomfortable with the situation. Through a short series of events, Bill becomes angry and attacks the German soldier. Joseph throws himself between them. A frustrated Bill leaves the camp for a while and Joseph connects with the soldier, who cries for his mother. In the final act, Bill sleeps for a while. Joseph lies awake, tormented. He eventually makes the decision to release the German while Bill is sleeping. Bill wakes and catches Joseph cutting the German free. An argument follows, during which Bill seems to fall apart. He eventually lets slip that he and George were in love. A shocked Joseph finally realizes the reasons behind Bill's behavior. He then releases the soldier. It is implied that Bill will turn Joseph in. The pair are later debriefed by the colonel. Tension builds as a quiet Bill is asked if he has anything to report. Bill decides not to say anything, much to Joseph's surprise and relief. They reconcile their friendship outside the dugout. Joseph swears not to say anything, and Bill admits that George wouldn't have wanted revenge. Bill leaves, and Joseph finishes his cigarette before following. Let's dig a little further into the characters. Joseph is a good man, has a big heart, and forges deep connections with people. In England, there was a huge expectation on men to jump at the chance to go to war. If you weren't in France, you were publicly branded a coward and shamed. Joseph is an example of someone who was pushed into signing up by society despite being intelligent enough to see no glory in the violence. He struggles with the knowledge that he doesn't fit into the strong male provider role that he was raised to aspire to. Wrestling with all that makes him doubt himself when struggling to make the right decision, be true to himself and release the captive German. Bill is equally complex. He is angry, stubborn and misunderstood. Hiding homosexuality was a huge struggle in these times. Coming to terms with it was even harder. To then find someone else in the same situation and fall in love is some luck. When we meet Bill, he has just had all this ripped away from him with the death of his secret lover, George. This has seemingly launched a vendetta against every German he encounters. He is challenged in this story when he has to reconnect with his compassion in order to understand Joseph's motives. Genre. This film is a war film, no doubt, but at its core, it's an anti-war film, a story of love, friendship, and compassion. These themes make a nice contrast against the harsh backdrop of World War I. It also brings up some great social and moral questions. What would you do if the life of your supposed enemy was in your hands? More than that, it tackles some societal issues that are in some cases still being fought against today. There, I think, is where the film has the most to offer to the genre. My name is Callum, and I'm the producer of this project. Firstly, I want to address the specified audience for this film, that is the male gender of the age 20 to 45. However, due to it having war aspects within the film, I feel that we will be aiming at older target audience as well. Before moving on to the practical elements, I want to focus on funding. We plan to raise our money through the power of friends, family and social media. However, I'm wanting to work with different reenactment teams throughout our project to try and lower the costs and give them more credibility where due. The practical elements of production is the largest issue that needs to be addressed. As for locations, we need a trench, a dugout, and a forest. Starting with the easiest of the three is the forest. We will need permission from the council to film in outside locations, especially at night time. After being in touch with several different members, I feel that this is doable for us within the project. As for the dugout, I'm in touch with several different reenactment teams and war museums about using their locations. 
At present, we are looking at several locations that are located in the Manchester and North West area. We are fully confident in finding these locations and we again think this is doable for our project. The trench is the biggest task of them all. We have been in touch with several locations around the country that we could possibly use. Some are specifically for filming, such as Hawthorne Trench and Trench Farms. Some found are for educational purposes and other locations are only accessible to the public, which may cause issues in the future if we decide to use them. Our best bet would be to use the locations that are only available for filming. However, they are located in Ipswich, which is four hours away from where we are. We are currently devising a plan to get all of the crew and cast to this location, and we are currently budgeting and scheduling this out as we speak. Hi, my name is Alice and I'm the first AD on this project. As the majority of the film will require exterior shitting, we'll be sure to carry out risk assessments and location rackies to assess any problems that may arise while filming outside and plan how to overcome them. We are also planning on attending a session with one of our tutors to learn how to do this the best and most efficient way to avoid any problems such as issues with weather and equipment. We plan on using a group of extras along with our main cast so therefore safety protocols will be put into place to ensure everyone is safe and comfortable on set. These will consist of plans regarding shelter, food, water and transport, which we will be providing. In regards to food, the entire cast and crew will be hiring outsource catering for each day on set. We are currently looking into hiring a van to transport equipment to and from the locations and the rest of the cast and crew will travel by car. Callum, Charlie and I are planning on taking a trip to each location in the upcoming weeks to ensure they are the right fit for the film and to carry out location recce's. Hi, I'm Jake, I'm the DOP for Ceaseless and I want to give you a brief introduction to the visual look for our film. I've been looking at contemporary photography and paintings from World War One to gauge an idea into the style of shots that can be used as well as some inspiration for the colour scheme. As our script follows a very genuine protagonist, I aim to give this film a very realistic feel, letting the setting and the characters lead the frame as well as the camera movements. But I also want to create a dramatic image through the lighting, which is where I've been looking at inspiration from other mostly exterior war films. I really like the images created through the cinematography in Saving Private Ryan and War Horse because the images feel very natural, but also very powerful. I will use some of these as my main inspirations moving forwards. I'm looking at different ways to make the visual elements of this film unique, but also fit into the narrative. I have been researching into how the DOP from Saving Private Ryan stripped the protective coating of the lens to give a harsher look and it's got me interested into seeing if I can find a filter for the lens to put in a matte box that gives this sort of rugged feel but still keeps the sharpness. A little about me as to why I'm the right DOP for this project. Well firstly I've been an AC on another war film called Six Weeks in Cairo so I've got a bit of experience when it comes to the different challenges in filming a historically accurate war film. Also, I've been involved in this project from its very beginning when it was just an idea in Charlie's head, so I feel very attached to it and motivated to tell the story to the best of my ability. Hi, I'm Emma and I'm going to be doing production design for this project. Ceaseless takes place in 20th century France. Many real world inspirations are available to create an accurate setting and to make a realistic war zone. Film set will be crucial for making its world authentic, therefore a lot of research and location scouting will help us to achieve their desired look. Specifically in the dugout, the architecture of the interiors will need to be cramped and damaged, which will need to be taken into consideration during set dressing as well as cinematography and blocking. Other things to be considered are personal items such as letters or even more common things like puzzles, which may be seen in the dugout to create a more practical and authentic setting. Other visuals seen throughout the film may include things like stretchers and makeshift beds. This will help bring the aesthetic of the film to life. Our protagonists, Joseph and Bill, will need to be dressed appropriately in the correct army uniforms. This is important as it helps with group identity, especially in such a realistic film that we're trying to create. Elements such as name badges may be used to create individuality to the characters, even though they are in such a uniformed group. I'm Archie, and I'm the editor of this project. With our approach to colouring, we'll be following many conventional aspects of war films, which is to desaturate the colour. However, we may saturate certain colours to symbolise certain aspects of the story so they stand out. For example, the orange in the campfire in the woods to represent a glimmer of humanity. Additionally, for our look, we are aiming for green tones for our shadows and blue tones for our highlights. For visual effects, we'll be adding muzzle flash, gunshots and smoke elements in post. We're planning not to explicitly show these effects, instead disguise them behind camera motion as it, we feel it may be more convincing to the audience. Fortunately, due to high-spec equipment, we have a wide colour space and a high dynamic range to work with. 
This will help with posts as we have more information to work with. This will ensure we have all the technical advantages to guarantee a smooth visual effects workflow.